morning, Dave. Welcome to the House of Fun. They're the two sisters, I presume? Yeah, Cheryl Beadle's the one on the left. The other one's Janet. And where's the dead one? In the bedroom. I've informed the coroner's officer. He's getting an undertaker down now. Isn't that our Dr Tom Kent? Uh, Dr Kent, yeah. He's been looking after Amy for years. That's why it's all a bit. Any sign of this missing bottle of pills? No, no. So he doesn't want to sign a death certificate without a PM. Anyway, I thought you might like to have a chat. Yeah, cheers, Dave. Morning. I'm DS Daly, this is WDC Croft. I'm sorry to hear about your loss. I know this is an extremely difficult time for you, so we'll try and sort this out as quickly as possible. Sort what out? There's nothing to sort out. I'm just going to have a quick word with Dr Kent, and then I'll be right with you. Gary, you will make the ladies a cup of tea, would you? We don't want any tea. Dr Kemp? Susie? Jeff? How are you, Doc? Oh, not too bad. Had better days. So, uh... So, basically, she shouldn't have died. She, she had another six months, maybe even a year. What exactly was wrong with her? Multiple sclerosis. But you don't think she died as a result of that? I would be unhappy about putting that on a death certificate, yes. I understand there are some pills missing. Yes. Ones you prescribed her? Painkillers. For ulcers. A side effect of the illness. You think it was an overdose? Amy was very weak. She could hardly have held a pill bottle, let alone opened one, without some help. I see. I, I'm not pointing any fingers, I'm not making any judgments. I'm just telling you the facts and I hope to God the post-mortem proves me wrong. All right, Gary. I'm really very sorry. Are they going to do a post-mortem? Yes, they are. She should be allowed to rest. Isn't right to cut her own... <laughs> Look, I know this is difficult, but I need to ask you a few quick questions. Now, can't you just leave us in peace? They're only trying to help. Go on. Who was it who had discovered Amy? Janet. Me. And when was this? This morning. What time? About eight o'clock. I come in to give her a breakfast. You don't live here? So you came in at eight? I start work at nine. Where do you work? Quick fair, so that gives me an hour with her. And she'd already passed away when you got here? So who was the last one to see her alive? I was. I, uh, I gave her a supper last night about eight. We watched some telly. Then I went to work. You work nights? Office cleaner. Did she seem at all depressed last night? Amy was a fighter, you know. But she was so low. And you think she might have taken an overdose? I think it's possible. What about you, Janet? Do you think she could have done that? Maybe. Dr Kent said that he thought it unlikely that she could have got the top of the bottle of pills. No, she couldn't. So, how do you think she might have taken them? I think I might have left the top off the bottle. Sorry. The undertakers have arrived. You think Cheryl's lying? Don't you? Possibly. Now, nah, leaving the lid off just sounded too convenient. And she was acting strangely. They both were. Well, their sister had just died. I'm going to try and get the PM fast-tracked. If they haven't done anything wrong, then they certainly don't deserve to be kept waiting around for days on end. You know, even if they did help Amy take an overdose, it's going to be very difficult to prove she didn't just take the tablets herself. You're reading my mind. So why are we bothering them? Because, unfortunately, it's illegal. 
you think they're criminals? You call people who break the law. Oh, come on, Sarge. So maybe they did help their sister die a dignified death. Well, she was obviously in a lot of distress. It's hardly a cardinal sin. Well, let's hope the PM proves Dr. Kent wrong. Actually, you might have another word with Dr. Kent. If Cheryl did leave the top off the bottle of pills, ask him if Amy was physically capable of taking them herself. Yeah. Look, Susie, dear Stanley's right. You've got to treat this like any other case. You think they'll have previous, do you, Sarge? Of course not, but that's not the point. Just because you happen to disagree with the law doesn't mean you don't have to investigate the case. Just like any other. I'm sure you're right, Sarge. Oh, surprise, surprise. Nothing on Janet Beadle. Let's see what dark secrets Cheryl's hiding. Yeah, okay, Jeff. I'll tell her. Bye. Susie, just had a message from DS Daily. He wants you to meet him at the Cockcroft in 15 minutes. Okay. He also said to tell you that there were a large number of pills in Amy's stomach. He's waiting on an approximate time of death. Cheryl's is number one in that block. Okay, we'll try her first, then we'll give Janet a knock. How'd you get on? I'm sorry, there's no previous for bumping off other loved ones. And both employers confirmed that the women were at work when they said they were. Right. You managed to talk to Dr. Kent? Yeah, he said that Amy's swallowing reflex was very poor. She'd only really managed to swallow fluids. Right. Why? What did the PM show? Well, the PM showed that Amy had a hot drink sometime before she died. The pills were partially dissolved in milk. Now, if she couldn't have swallowed them, they must have been stirred into the milk. Which she was physically incapable of doing. Exactly. Hang on. That coming from number one? Yeah. Hello. Sorry to disturb you again. A couple more questions we need to ask you. Come in, then. Hello, Janet. Hello. That you we heard? Hi. Having a barney? Yeah, sorry. Oh, don't apologise. It's your own home. You do what you want in your own home. Yeah. What was it, then? Hey. The row. What were you rowing about? It's private. Like I said, do what we like in our own home. It was uh, nothing. It was just a disagreement about funeral arrangements, that's all. We're both a bit tense. Of course. Oh, are you married, Cheryl? Was. Divorced a couple of years back. Look, you, you said there were uh, a couple of questions you wanted to ask. Yeah. These pills. Right. You say you think you left the top off the bottle. Yes. Now, I want to be absolutely clear that I understand what you're saying here. You think that Amy was so depressed about her illness that she deliberately took an overdose? I do, yes. She emptied the contents of the bottle into her mouth. She swallowed because she wanted it to be all over. Like I said, she'd had a bad year. She knew it could only get worse and she just wanted out of it. Janet? What? You agree with your sister? Yeah. You see, my problem is... Amy couldn't have swallowed the pills. She was physically incapable of doing so. Now, you both looked after her. You both know that her swallowing reflex could only handle fluids. So why are you lying? Janice and Cheryl Beadle, I'm arresting you both on suspicion of aiding and abetting a suicide. Oh, yes, please. Uh, can you put a lot of sugar in it? Yeah. Now, what would you get for helping someone die? Well, that would depend on the circumstances. But it would be a jail sentence. Sometimes, not always. The court takes everything into account. Look, try not to worry about it. See loads of sugar, yeah? Please. Did you get on with Janet? Yes. Just seems to be a lot of tension between the two of you. Well, it's very difficult. We're both under a lot of stress. Just would have thought, after something like this, that you'd stick together. We have our disagreements. We're sisters. What kind of things do you disagree about? Time, mainly. Time? 
how much time I spent with Amy. I was with her a lot more than Janet was. So, maybe Janet had other things in her life. I could have had other things in my life. I just sacrificed them. I put Amy first. Maybe you were closer to Amy. Of course I was closer. She confided in me. We understood each other. You said earlier in the flat that you thought that what she wanted was for it to end. Yes. Did she tell you this? We talked about it every day. Did Janet know about this? Janet? She wouldn't have understood. We know Amy couldn't have taken the pills by herself. She couldn't have even held a spoon to stir them in, could she? Could she, Cheryl? No. Did you do it for her? We understand how difficult it must have been for you, Cheryl. You'd be surprised how many people think what you did was a commendable thing. Uh, even people in this nick. They wouldn't be the ones going to prison for it, though, would they? Judges, juries are very sympathetic to this kind of thing. They'd understand that whatever was done, was done out of love. She was just... so unhappy. And you did what any good sister would do. How could I refuse her? I'd watched her going downhill over the past ten years. She was my older sister. She was the one that used to look after me. What do you think it was like to see her not able to feed herself or, or, or go to the lavatory or wash herself even? She had nothing. So you gave her the pills? Cheryl? Yes, I gave her the pills. She begged me. What would you have done? It was so gentle. Very dignified. It was how she wanted it. I held the mug to her lips and she, she drank. And then she thanked me. <laughs> she thanked me. She slipped away. She died in my arms. <laughs> Peaceful. And out of pain. You know, people can say that I was wrong. But I'll tell you this, and I said the same to Janet. Even if I was wrong, I would still do it again. What have we got, Jeff? No irregularities. Looks like it's all wrapped up, Matthew. If we could just have a chat with Janet, then we should be done. Right. This way, please, John. Things we have to do, eh, Sarge? Give it a rest, Susie. Let's go. What's happening? Dear Staley wants to interview you. Just a short chat and then you'll be released. What's Cheryl said? I'm sure she'll tell you all about it. Could you just wait there, please? This won't take long. Custody. Yeah, hold on a sec, please. Jeff, Dr. Pryor. Thanks, Matt. You put it through to the office. I can give you a lift back to the estate after we've finished, if you like. Oh, right. And that would be the earliest. Right, thanks. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Bye. Susie, have a word. Matt, keep an eye on Janet for ten seconds, would you? Yeah, no problem. Sorry about this. I won't be a minute. What time did Cheryl say she left Amy's flat? Uh, ten. And that checked out with the work? Yeah, her employer said that she was there at 10.30 as usual. 
Well, why? What's the problem? That was the pathologist on the blower. What did he say? Amy Beadle almost certainly died between 1am and 8am. Right. Absolute earliest, absolute midnight. Now, Cheryl told us in the interview that she was with her when she died, didn't she? Yeah. Obviously, she couldn't have been. She left two hours before Amy could have died at the earliest. She lied. So... So? Poison's units say a woman of Amy's weight and age would have become unconscious fairly quickly with that amount of pills in her stomach. Minutes rather than hours. No, I think she gave her the pills and then she left when she became unconscious. So why would she tell us she stayed with her till she died? And more to the point, why didn't she stay? I mean, if you're going to help somebody commit suicide, you stay with them till the end, don't you? You don't let them die alone. What are we getting into here, Sarge? Well, I think we might be looking at a murder. It doesn't make any sense, Sarge. She knew Amy only had a year or so at the most. Why risk getting arrested for murder? Whatever. It's not right, is it? We're going to interview Cheryl again? No. Not at the moment. I think we interview Janet. I'll be honest with you, Janet. I'm confused. Are you? You obviously loved your sister Amy. Anybody could see how upset you were over her death. And yet, here's your sister Cheryl, who's helped her out of a great deal of pain and distress, done what Amy wanted her to, and you seem to hate her for it. Why? Cheryl implied that you and Amy weren't that close. Did she? I mean, is it... I don't know, is it some kind of jealousy? That Amy confided in Cheryl rather than you? That she asked her to help her to die? Not you? Amy and I were fine. We were very close. If Cheryl told you any different, it's rubbish. Right. So she lied then. You didn't have a problem with Amy wanting to die? No. So maybe your problem was that you don't think she did want to die? <laughs> Is that why you're so upset, Janet? Janet? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But you suspect. Maybe she changed her mind, maybe she asked her and then... She... But as you say, you were close. Do you think she wanted to die? Look, Amy was a strong woman. She drove us both mad, really. She was stronger than the two of us put together. It was ordering us about, demanding things. She was a right pain. She'd got really bad-tempered recently, and I mean, I know it was the illness and that, but... There was one thing she always had, and that was this determination to wring the last bloody drop out of her life. It was her way of saying up yours to the world. Doesn't sound to me like somebody who wants to take an overdose. No. So why is Cheryl lying? Janet? I can't do this to my sister. Amy was your sister as well. You owe it to her to tell us the truth. You do know Amy died alone. No. Cheryl didn't stay with her. She gave her the pills and then she went to work. Amy died alone. God. You've got to tell us the truth. I don't know the truth. So tell us what you suspect. I think it was money. What money? Her will. Amy was going to change her will. Leave all her money to charity. That's why I suspect. Cheryl killed her. They want to speak to you again. Come on. I've just been on the phone to Amy's solicitors. They were due to come and speak to her the day after tomorrow. That's right. About what? You know about what? 
I want you to tell me. Amy wanted to change her will. She'd saved about £10,000 over the last 30-odd years, and she wanted it all to go to a charity for multiple sclerosis. Instead of? Instead of it being shared between myself and Janet. But she died before she could make that change, didn't she? Yes, she did. Is that why you killed her? For the money? No. But you admit that you killed her? Sharon? Janet thinks it was just about money, doesn't she? Yeah. I believe she does. She would. But then look at her. She's got a good job. A day job. She still has a social life. Goes out at night with her mates as a laugh. She's got a new boyfriend. Tell you that, did she, eh? No. Nice bloke. Not bad looking, neither. I had a life years ago. I worked for the council. Payments clerk. But I couldn't do both. Look after Amy and my job. I had a husband. But it's not much fun, is it, living with someone whose sole topic of conversation is their ill sister? I gave up more than Janet did, whatever she says. But then why should I expect her to understand? Try us, then. Or are we not up to it, either? You certainly had us fooled earlier with all that rubbish about saying goodbye. I did say goodbye. I did hold her. Did you, Cheryl? Or did you just tell yourself that because it made you feel better? You think I'm evil, don't you? I think what you did is evil. I gave up everything for Amy. Maybe you wanted to. No, I didn't want to. She was my sister. I had to. If you loved her so much, how could you kill her? You lose your sense of perspective. I killed her. Because she stole my life from me. Amy stole it. And Janet watched. The money. That would have just gone a little way. A tiny way. To paying me back. <laughs>